Welcome to Get Connected with Nina Del Rio, a weekly conversation about fitness, health, and happenings in our community on 106.7 Light FM. Good morning and thanks for joining us on Get Connected. Now we all know the saying, man up, you know, get to it, show some grit, get what you deserve. Dr. Tracy Weiland is turning the tables, telling us it's time to women up. Dr. Weiland studies business trends, work, and careers, and she joins us with her perspective on why 2015 is an up year for women and why now is the time to pursue what we want at work. Dr. Weiland, thanks for joining us again on Get Connected. Oh, thank you for having me. The, her website is tracywylan.com, W-I-L-E-N. Dr. Weiland has authored 11 books, including Women Lead, Career Perspectives from Workplace Leaders, and her newest book is Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends. Regarding 2015 specifically, though, you say it's an up year for women, an, advanta- an advantageous year for women in the workplace. Why is that? I do. And, you know, I started watching the trends uh, carefully in 2014 that were very optimistic for women, And I see that trend continuing. Uh, Mainly, women are in the news all the time and um, succeeding in multiple areas, whether it's in the workforce, whether it's through self-employment, and even our boomer women are leading the way. So you have examples of moment, or particular particular issues that you think bring momentum to the case that's, that have been building with regard to raises, promotions, and leadership opportunities. One of them is the situation at Google, which doesn't seem like it's a great thing on, on the face of it, the facts of how few women are actually in their tech sectors. Yes. So actually in 2014, Google published you know, a report. They, they analyzed their own data in their firm to see what are the percentages of women and minorities. And actually, they created, they shined a light on something that we need more transparency on. The numbers are off. But because they did that, it was out in the open, and people started talking about it. And nine other firms analyzed their data in Silicon Valley as well and found that their numbers weren't very good either. And that, to me, started to create this momentum. People started to sign up and say, we have to do something about the pipeline. The pipeline is here. Now we have to invest in diversity and inclusion. And that, to me, is why I think it's positive for 2015. I think what you're, what you're referring to, some of these issues or some of these initiatives are Intel specifically. They say they're going to put up to $300 million to increase opportunities for women and minorities. How does that translate into action, a plan that actually is more than, you know, just on the surface, a big headline? You know, that's right, and I would like to see, you know, the traction happen. I see people saying we're going to invest in it, we're going to open up doors, create programs so that we can make sure that people are poised for leadership opportunities they come up. We're going to carefully screen all candidates for opportunities on boards, but I'm waiting like you are to see this actually happen in traction. Now, positive note on that, I have been invited into a lot of companies who are taking this very seriously and trying to think through how can we embrace our educated, highly poised leaders, women, to move forward. Do you have any any concrete examples of of that? Because I wonder, do male boards, which are mostly what you're dealing with, do male boards and hiring managers know how to recruit and retain women? Well, we have, you know, the 30% club. Uh, Some big-name firms are committing to, like McKinsey, NBC, and DuPont, to sign up to commit 30% of their board seats to women. Now, we know that there's a quota system testing in Europe where uh, countries are actually signing up and saying we have to do something, and Norway has had the most progress in it. When we're looking for, you know, what's happening with those programs, uh, McKinsey has done a fantastic study showing that companies that have women in executive roles and on boards have increased uh, overall financial performance 15% more than companies that have not. So, I, you know, again, I'm seeing people analyzing it, looking at it, quantifying it, and really trying to take some action. Looking at it from another perspective, you also say 2015 might be the year for women to up and out of the firm where they work. In other words, if you don't get what you want, you could go. Is that just because of overall optimism in the economy? Well, here's right. So here's what I encourage women is you're in the spotlight now. You're, if you're working and this is, you know, the opportunity for you to raise your hand and say, you know, I want to get on board with some of these great programs. I want to be a leader. You know, where's the next opportunity for me? If you're hitting your head against the wall, yes, I think there is a lot of optimism. The last quarter of 2014 had very good job reports. The first quarter of 2015 
we had um, high consumer optimism. Companies were saying that instead of just replacement hiring, which is hire, you know fulfilling when someone leaves, they're also looking at growth hiring. That signals to me as an employee there's opportunities outside the firm. So if I can't get movement inside the firm, then I would encourage women to start looking outside because raises and promotions can be as much as 20 to 25 percent if you go to a competitor, a vendor, or a customer. So I'm very optimistic if people want to make moves. There's also the option of owning your own business, and women-owned businesses are actually growing faster than ever. Yes, and so that's the third point is, okay, if it's not working at the firm that you're at and you're looking outside and you don't see what you want, a lot of women are just saying, you know what, I can run a company. And women-owned firms are growing at one and a half times the national average, and we expect that to increase. So women are just saying, I'm going to take it into my own hands and own my business, whether it's a startup, a franchise, or some sort of self-employment. What is the demographic of these women, and what does that tell you? Does it, does it, do you know anything about their, their financial background to start with or their age, perhaps? Well, this is what excites me about women in, in multiple generations. It's a lot of the Gen X and younger boomers who are moving into franchising or who have or, or own businesses. The average age is about 45 to 54. And women, by the way, own about 25% of the franchises today. We might remember the real estate agent of the past, but that real estate agent is, you know, expanding her franchise, and she's now owning School of Rock or, um, you know, a Subway or some other type of franchise that's of interest to her. I I do want to ask about those franchises specifically, because I think from data that you gave me, the, the most commonly owned franchises by women are School of Rock, Great Clips, and Huntington Learning Centers, which are great businesses. But I, in some sense, to me, they're traditional choices for women. They're about education, children, and personal grooming. To me, these choices feel as if there's still a divide. There's not an opening into male-dominated areas. Well, actually, so women will migrate, and currently they're looking at franchises that they're comfortable with. So many women are pursuing home-based businesses, or specialty business that interest them, like salons and spas and clothing and fitness. But many of our younger women are starting businesses in the technology sector, but, you know, in security or slide share or, you know, some sort of social media technology. So, it, again, it can be generational, but to me, owning a business is owning a business, right? And to me, it's not a gender preference. It's you're owning a business, you're making money, you're running your shop. We're speaking with Dr. Tracy Wylan. She has, uh, Dr. Wylan studies business trends, work, and careers. She's been a scholar at Stanford University and held leadership positions at Apple, HP, Cisco, and the Apollo Group. We're talking about women in business for 2015. Why it's a good time for us. Website is tracywylan.com. Our website is lightfm.com, and you're listening to Get Connected on 106.7 Light FM. I'm Nina Del Rio. Particularly for for women-owned businesses, you say that uh, women under 30 are dominating the crowdfunding sphere when it comes to to, uh, starting new businesses. Why in particular are women doing better by using crowdfunding than men? So, you know, the American Express Open Forum uh, continues to publish and monitor new businesses by women and startup businesses. And what they found is that women are starting businesses at an average of 1,200 a day. That's up from 740 a day uh, last year. And where, where it's happening is that they're leading in eight out of the top 13 industries. And women dominate the crowdfunding space. This is like Kickstarters and Indiegogo because they're saying, you know, if, I, if in the past I couldn't get funding through the normal channels, I can now have these new Internet-enabled marketplaces and really reach out to the crowds to help me fund my business. And a lot of women are just taking advantage of that and saying, you know, I have an idea. Let me put it out there and people are, are making donations towards it. So it's, it's pretty exciting that we have these new options for financing that we didn't have in the past. One of, another way to look at uh, sort of uh, the perspectives on women at the moment is to be upbeat, you say, about politics. There's conversation about Hillary Clinton, Elizabeth Warren, Carly Fiorina. We're talking about them quite a bit. How does that translate to a better business climate for women? You know, when we started in 2015, the first week of January, the word was all about Hillary, who's running for her, who's running against her. That's the first time in history that the conversation of the presidential candidacy was about a female that strong, you know, a year before the elections. And then you start to see in the media, 
the shows are taking a new direction, whether you're watching House of Cards, Veep, Madam Secretary, The Good Wife, all of it is starting to show and position women in, in high-ranking positions of authority. And that, to me, is just we're making a transition. We're making a transition in society. We're embracing the fact that women are leaders in many sectors, including politics. And I think 2016 is going to be very exciting. And, you know, to me, this is useful for women because now you see role models. You can see people who are doing things that you can start to envision yourself doing. You also note that boomer women are um, up on travel and shacking up. So who's in that group and where are they going? You're right. So I see actually three trends now with women. I see them up on travel. I see them shacking up. And I also see them buffing up. So the women uh, boomers are leading the way, and that's what I think is so interesting. They're looking at travel and saying, I didn't get a chance to travel because I was working or I was raising kids. So they're taking about five trips a year, according to AARP, who monitors some of our senior trends, and they're going to the United States, mostly in the United States, but also overseas. A lot of them are, you know, doing the bucket list, places I wanted to go, or, you know, visiting family and having multi-generational trips, or just taking that summer vacation that they never had. In terms of shacking up, many of us might remember that great show called Golden Girls, where a number of, uh, where four women who were either widowed or divorced, over 55, decided to live together. And that's what our boomer women are saying. You know, I'm retiring. I don't want to go live with my kids. I don't want to live alone. And I don't want to go to an old age community. So why don't I just create roommate opportunities with my good friends? And then we can travel together. We can share chores. We can share finances. And it's probably going to be a lot safer and a lot more fun. In terms of buffing up, uh, the YMCA noted that over the past three years, they've had an increase of over 34% of plus 65 membership. Because older people are saying, I'm living longer. I need to stay healthy and take care of myself. And i got to get into the gym. And so they're driving yet another new trend for our, for our older, older women. And maybe this is like when you were talking about politics. It's women changing a perspective of what they can do and what, how other people might see them. Women, you know, this is the one thing I embrace about women in, in Women Lead. What I noticed when I interviewed women and surveyed women, they don't view life as an obstacle. They view it as a challenge and an opportunity. And I see women spearheading this in so many different avenues and sectors. And it's a different way of looking at things, and I think it's a much more positive way of looking things than in the past. I, I want to ask or finish up by asking about equal pay, and, and you'll be familiar with this. When, when some of the most recognizable women in the world are still getting paid less than their male counterparts, and I'm thinking about the Sony leak that showed that Charlize Theron and Jennifer Lawrence were still getting paid less than their male co-stars, what does that say to you about any leverage or expectation that the average woman has to be paid an equal share? So here's what I encourage women to do, because I did it myself. Okay, so you're looking at, at salaries, you're looking at it's not level. So now you have to start thinking about yourself as a business, as an entity that needs to make revenue, and how are you going to do that? Salary is just one channel. So I encourage women to become financially astute in other financial instruments, such as do you understand the stock market? Do you understand about real estate? Do you understand about bonds? Can you figure out alternative revenue streams like entrepreneurship or consulting or, you know, Etsy? I have a lot of women colleagues who are promoting and selling things on Etsy and eBay. Think about your package. Yes, we have challenges. Yes, we have opportunities. But you make them yours. Own it. Don't sit back and whine, but rather say, how am I going to pro- progress this ahead? That's why I get very excited about women business owners because they will – level the playing field, and help change it, right? Well, I believe we'll be at a tipping point soon where women will continue to hire other women and, and create a more level salary field. Dr. Tracy Weiland, she's been a scholar at Stanford University and has held leadership positions at Apple, HP, Cisco, and the Apollo Group. Her latest book is Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends, and her website is Tracy, with an E, Tracy Weiland, W-I-L-E-N.com. Tracy, thanks for joining us on Get Connected Again.